we're going on a uh, seven miles an hour 17. boat. Seventy miles an hour boat, and it's going to be really fast. Go on. There it is. Can you see it there? It's brand new. Black scorpion. <laughs> 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so we're just waiting, we're waiting on another two. Just wait for them to come down and save my water. Can you stay by Tom there? Yeah. Quite a nice place, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, Thanks my name's man. Hayden. I'm going to take you on your rib trip today, okay? First of all, I'm going to kick you all out in a life jacket, give you a quick briefing about your life jacket, get you on the boat, give you a quick briefing about the boat, and then we'll go off and have some fun, okay? Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, yeah. that's the only plan I've got anyway, so. <laughs> I've spoken to everyone else, have you read your ticket? So, these life jackets, guys, okay? What you do, put one arm in like that. Put your other arm in and click it in the front, okay? If it's too big or too small, do not worry. I'm going to come around and adjust them all for you anyway. And if I don't pass you a life jacket, don't worry, okay? You mean to just get a different type of life jacket. Mainly you two. Okay. Wobbly for some reason. Yeah, it's because we're on a jetty, floating jetty. So if you just put that through the back of her legs and then round to the front, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're in. Do a 10, do a 12. 10 out of 10, 10 Emily. I'll see you. Oh yeah, excellent. It's designed for the military, and you'll see why in a minute. Please. <laughs> Emily, it's my neat top. I ain't going to hold you. Don't worry. Now, we have our own seats. Now that's our life raft. Okay. In the event of emergency, we need to get off this boat for any reasons. I will deploy that life raft. Okay. It's like a big one of ten. It's quite a smart at sight, but you're not going to find out because there's too much paperwork. Does anyone work that? I don't like paperwork. Yeah. Guess what's in there? Paperwork. Paperwork. Oh, no. In this one here. Oh, yeah, that's for tonight. And then in this one is all our flares. And then this one is yeah. all our fire extinguishers, okay? Now, to get in the boat, guys, you stand on these black pads that I'm standing on right now, okay? They're the nice grippy bits. That can't be slippy. Okay? Uh -oh. You do. Bend over. You stand, step in, okay? It is a step in. I haven't got short legs, it's up to there on me. So it is a bit of a step, so just take your time, okay? Pop it. Close to the camera. Hi. Okay. Should be laughing to you. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope so. Go, guys. Oh, we're going backwards. Ready? Yeah. 
blows away. Oh, that wasn't even fast. Ready? High speed run. This is because they used to build and modify the Catalina seaplanes and the motor torpedo boats of the war. After the war, they started making coaches, buses, and bin wagons. Some of those coaches are still going today in places like Cuba. So, as well, we're pretty good at building something. Now, in the middle of that green building, you just about see a spire of a church. Now, that's the village of Shanvice. Shanvice used to be the capital of Gwynedd back in the medieval days. This is because it used to be an old drover's town. So that red boy on your right hand side, all the way over to the mainland is sandbanks at low water. And from the green boy on your left side to the shore is sandbanks at low water. So what the cattle drovers used to do is get their cattle to walk all the way out, make them swim the little bit in the middle, and then they go up to the village of Shanvice and they go to market. Times have changed from the village today, and up today it's just a housing estate. Hold on. Hold on. Quarry. The stone that was quarried from there was used to build both the bridges coming onto Anglesey, most of Maris Town Seafront, and also Birmingham Town Hall, which was designed by a guy called Joseph Hansen, who designed the Hansen Cab. But what he didn't take into account is how expensive it was going to be to move the stone from here all the way to Birmingham. So it actually made him bankrupt in trying to do it. Go ahead, don't you? Soft rock, as you can see from all the landslides we've had over the years. 
But this is good for all the breeding birds. It makes it easier to make their nests. The island itself is 59 hectares. I don't know how big that is, it's that big. Which makes it the ninth largest island off the coast of Wales. The island itself has a triple SI. That's a site of special scientific interest. It's also got an SPA, which is a special protection area. Now that's because of all the big black birds you can see. Now they're the cormorants. Now we have up to 40% of Wales' breeding cormorants living on the island, which makes it one of the largest breeding sites of cormorants in the British Isles. There's over 800 nests. Now the ones that look like cormorants, but a little bit smaller, they have a slight greeny brown tinge to their feathers and a bit of a tuft on the top of the head. Now they're the shags. Now if you see any cormorants and shags in the water, you've got two on the left hand side. They're like little submarines. The reason they sit so low in the water is because they do not have an oil gland in their feathers, so their feathers aren't actually waterproof. So if they spend too much time in the water, these birds can actually drown. It's not good for a bird, that is it? So if you see any with their wings stretched out, what he's doing is drying his wings so he can actually fly again. In some parts of the world, they have Cormans captive. What they've done is put an elastic band around his neck, tie some fishing line to its feet and send it off fishing. It'll then catch a, catch a fish, but not being able to swallow it. So what they do is they pull it back, pull the fish out of its throat, and use that as live bait to catch bigger fish. Does anyone recognise a cormorant? Especially if you're from Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. It's Live a bird. bird. I asked the scouts of that the other day, he didn't have a clue. <laughs> Wasn't impressed. <laughs> you having a good time? Yeah, we haven't seen any puffins though. What do you think of the speed of the boat? The speed of the boat is very fast. I'll right. tell you. semaphore station there was a series of these from Holyhead all the way to Liverpool and what they did is they communicated to Liverpool of what ship was on its way what cargo it was carrying and what price they wanted for its cargo so they made the turnaround time in Liverpool not fast enough wait for that jet to go Telegraph, all these became redundant. Apart from this one, there's someone thought it was a good idea to put a marine biology centre here for the Bangor University. It lasted six months. This is because they had a really bad winter and they couldn't get supplies out to the students. The students had to suck moisture out of limpets and catch birds to survive. It's a good way of spending your nine grand a year, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so after that, they moved it to the town of Menai Bridge, where she still is today, and it's one of the best school of ocean sciences in the world. Now guys, this is where we're going to start seeing our colony of Atlantic grey seals. These numbers grown to the oh, yeah. hundreds. This is because they come from more exposed parts of Anglesey and the surrounding area. And they also come here for breeding reasons. Let me look. There they are. Hello seals. Now the way to tell the difference between look. male and female, obviously the females are prettier. But the males, they've got a much broader nose. An adult male seal look, there they are. Look, look up there, seal in the water. Look at it lying there. Look at the seals. And weigh up to about 180 kilos. Can you see the heads? Yeah. Look, the what? The seals, they've got really long whiskers. <laughs> they use these whiskers to sense turbulence in the water and they can actually sense fish for up to four meters away. Which makes and seals the A1 prex predators in these waters. That's what Apex we thought up until set. last year. Sharks. Where a pair of orca whales were spotted off Hollyhead. Oh. But thankfully the oh. orcas they didn't find our seals here at Puffin Island. Because orcas, they kill for fun. And they reckon they would have killed about 80 seals in about two days. Oh, you guys are quite lucky as well. Because if you go to Scotland orca spotting, it's £180 per person for two hours. 
Do you see the seals in the water? Hayden. Hello. I spotted them first. Now you know seals are all different colours. The reason they're different colours is the age of the animal. So the darker in colour is, the older the animal. Can we look at the seals? Look at who's looking at us. Yeah. What the seals have done at the minute, a lot of them have gone off feeding. So, what they do at high water, they come and go off fishing. And when the tide turns, they'll come back in, sit on a rock until the tide goes all the way up, comes all the way back in and pushes them off their rock. They'll then go and do a couple of hours fishing again and then do exactly the same thing. So it's quite a nice life as a seal. They do about four hours work a day. So if I come back as any animal, this is what I want to come back as. You're looking at some of the size and some of them. It doesn't look like they're starving either. It's wings out. Oh, I think we're going to see it eat a bird. There he is. Look at him, he's having a sniff. Look at him, look at him. Look at his nose. Oh. Yeah. He's like, I want to see you. Where are you? Wait, it's coming closer to the boat. What's it doing? This is our noisy bird. Is it a split? Now these noisy things over here, now these are the kitty wakes. Now the kitty, kitty wakes have had a bit of a tough time over the past five or six years on the island. Just because they've been laying a lot of eggs, but their eggs have been getting wrong. So what they did, they put some cameras up and they found a pair of peregrine falcons coming to the island and actually robbing the kitty mate's eggs. Thankfully now the kids have They've moved on and the kitty wakes are doing really well. Do you still get any puffins here or? Yeah. We are struggling to find them at the minute, but we have been seeing them all day. Ah. We reckon they're going to go in the next few days. That's why I've brushed them around this side so one more chance to see them. Oh, uh, Tommy, you might see your favourite bird. Yeah. This might be a lifelong dream, seeing a, seeing a puffin. Yeah, my life, when you see my favourite bird. Oh, hey. oh. Let's go in. Look at them all looking. See? That's <laughs> not going to here. Oh, look. Oh, look. You might be able to see fish or jellyfish. Kitty wakes. I mean, look those birds up there. Kitty wakes. Do you like them? Yeah. There's the nests up there. My favourite bird is kitty wakes. I see a jellyfish. So I want to see a puffin. And I want to see a kitty. Well, you just seen them in there. So the puffins on Puffin Island. Now they've had a bit of a tough time over the past couple of hundred years. This is for two reasons. The first reason, as humans, we used to like to catch them, put them into barrels of brine and pickle them, and then eat them in the winter months. But that became unfashionable turn of the century. But then in 1901, there was a ship called the Pioneer. Now the Pioneer was a paddle steamer coming from Liverpool. She hit some bad weather and ended up breaking down and ended up crashing into Puffin Island. Like most ships back in the day, the Pioneer was infested with brown rats. The brown rats got onto the island and absolutely devastated the Puffin, puffin population. So, so in 1995 they did a bird count and only found eight nesting pairs. So in 1997, with the help of the RAF, what they decided to do is stick seven tons of wharfing on the island and get rid of all the rats. Now there's a group of puffins on your left hand side, there's three of them. We're looking at... There they are, look, they're two flying now. There they are, in the water. So today we have about 150 breeding oh. pairs of puffins on Puffin Island. What are you seeing? So you got another one on your right hand side. Yeah, look. Now puffin numbers oh, take a long time to increase. <gasps> This is because they can only lay one egg a year and it takes them five years to reach mature adulthood. So when a chick is first born, the parents feed it for about seven to eight weeks. After that, they stop feeding it. So it fledges a nest, learns how to fly, catch fish and swim. Once he's done that, they'll start heading out and they head all the way into Antarctic waters and spends the first five years of its life out at sea on his own. So Tom, what's a group called? A circus! A circus of puffins, three or more. Yeah. <gasps> There's a circus! I see a circus of them! Look, Hayden! Yeah, look. Oh. Doing a job? <laughs> you want my job, mate? Yes, please. Yeah, when you were a bit older. 
Okay. Oh, there's one. No one's seen it. Oh, it's by himself and he might get eaten by that seagull. The seagulls are puffins. Now, four. puffins, they can dive down to depths of over 40 meters. Now, that's a long way now. Now, that building up there in the middle. Now, that's an old single cell monastery built in the 6th century. Because Puffin Island isn't actually its real name. Its real name is Unis Cyril. Now, he was the patron saint of Anglesey, who actually set up a hermitage on the island in his later years. And this is where he's actually believed to be buried. <coughs> now, all the bushes on there, they're elderflower berry bushes. Wow. The monks used to grow it here, take it to Penmont, unless you were to make all their wines and ciders. Must have been quite good stuff though, because they thought the water in Penmont had special healing powers. I want the recipe. There it is, look. So, the water. I'm actually. It's red Bill. I'm seeing oh. my favourite birds for the first time. Like it. Oh, you know, as puffins, they got a really orange bill. That bill will actually cut them down after breeding season, and they go to a much more pale colour. So guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to the lighthouse to tell you a little bit about that and then well it'll be time man. to head back in, okay? Yeah. every 30 seconds and a white light that flashes once every five seconds at night. Oh. How's that for timing? <laughs> now it stands at 19 meters high and can be seen from 12 miles away. Now it's the last working lighthouse in Britain to have a working bell. Sadly that bell is going at the end of this year. They're changing them all to foghorns. A bit of health and safety you'll be able to hear the foghorn from further away. It's just not too bad. Now the two lighthouse keepers they used to live in those two white cottages on the shore. Today, one of those is a holiday lap, and they charge you two grand a week to live in one of them. Not bad, is it? It's not bad listening to a bell every 30 seconds. Don't want to be like listening to a fog horn, though. So, I don't think I might need to change the prices on So, guys, has everyone enjoyed themselves, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Right. Everyone said the right answer, otherwise, you're going in. <laughs>
Papa. <laughs> yeah. It's, I want to go on the scooter again. You're going to have a great YouTube video, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe we'll get thousands of views. Let's go in reverse now, watch. Give that out a ten. a ten. You know, I'm breaking the rules and saying just infinite out of ten. So it can't be. Really, what would you give it? Infinity out of ten. Yeah. Did you love that? Right, take your life jackets off. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, what do you think about it? <laughs> 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 <la